Hi, I'm Chef Alan Tetra with Global Sugar Art, and today we're going to talk about cake lace. I'm going to show you how to make the lace, uh, how to put it on the lace mats, how to remove it, how to paint it, or to color it, and how to apply it to cakes, and show you various things that you can do with cake lace. Uh, we'll start by talking about the mats a little bit. Um, there are basically two or three types of mats. Uh, you can get really nice lace patterns. And when we refer to lace, it doesn't have to be a lace pattern. It can be silhouettes. Uh, it can be words like on this cake. So the lace mats have really evolved to have all kinds of applications in cake decorating. For the mix that you use to apply in these mats, you can purchase uh, mixes pre-made. Uh, like our Alan Tatro brand, we have a premium lace mix that is pearlized or we have a more of a flat one that's just a white or a cream colored. You can also buy powdered mixes like from Claire Bowman or Martellato where you mix them with water um, and just mix them in a mixer and then you spread them. They both have different properties and different uses. And as I show you how to use the lace mix today, I'll talk about the different properties that these lace mixes have. So let's get going. I'm going to use this lace mat today and to apply it I'm going to use this little Atico spatula uh, and sometimes I'll use a spoon as well and I'm going to be using the premium lace mix the pearlized version today and again this is my own lace mix and it always comes with this inside piece so that the product stays fresh. <clears throat> it's a rather thin gelatinous mixture. Now this has a little bit different consistency than the uh, like the Martellato or the Claire Bowman where you mix them up yourself. This is uh, because this is a little bit more gelatinous I like to make sure that you use it at room temperature or even a little bit warmer. The colder it is the more that it will shrink back as you're trying to apply it to the lace mat. So the application is really really simple. Just smear it on the lace mat and then just go back and forth until you fill in the cavities. Now I'm doing this on a, um, on a piece of, uh, of cardboard because I'm going to be placing this in the oven for a little while after uh, to dry it for the first stage. So just so that I can show you some of the differences you can use a little spatula like this or you can use the back of a spoon. The finer the detail in the mat, the more the spoon works better. And all you do is just go in a circular motion and it sort of pushes the lace mix down into the small cavities. <clears throat> so there are basically two ways of doing that either with the spoon or the, uh, or the spatula. And we're going to do this whole piece. Now when you're using the pre-made mixes, as I said, it's better if they're a little warmer. You will find that you'll spread the mix and you look and all of a sudden it's pulled away from the sides. It, it's like it shrinks. That's very common. That happens all the time. Um, the only way to get around this uh, or the workaround is to completely fill the mat with your mix. Make sure you clean the top surface off so it's really clean and then we're going to put this in the oven at about 175 or 180 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes and then you take it out of the oven, you let it cool a minute or two and then you spread a second layer on top and that will fill in all the little cavities uh, that have shrunk and, and are exposed. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. So if you have a nice flat piece like this and it's not too wide, you can use like one of these uh, uh, Claire Bowman knives and go right over the top and just remove any excess. And that looks pretty good. I've filled in almost every, 
every cavity. I see little spots here and there that I'll catch on the second round. Now, if you're using the Martellato or the Claire Bowman uh, mix that you have to mix yourself with water in, the, in a mixer, you'll find that it's not as gelatinous. It doesn't pull in as much. And one coat will sometimes do, but I always recommend that you do two coats. Uh, it just gives you a stronger lace to work with. It just is more manageable when you're putting it on the cake. Some of the other differences in the lace mixes, the Martellato and the Claire Bowman tend to give you a heavier, thicker lace. Um, our brand was developed to give you a very thin, very light lace. Uh, so every lace mix is not the same, and I encourage you to try different ones for different applications, and you will really start seeing the difference. When you use a pearlized lace mix, it will dry and it will be a little bit firmer. Uh, for instance, uh, when you want, if you want to make flowers and you want to make lace leaves, the pearlized mix will give you a better leaf that you can shape. Um, so that's just a little bit about the different mixes. So the next step from here is right into the oven, about 175 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Just put it on a sheet pan with the cardboard in it that's perfectly safe in the oven, 10 minutes. Take it out of the oven, allow it to cool for about two or three minutes just so that you can touch it, and then apply a second layer. And always make sure that you clean the top really, really well. After your second layer, you can just let it air dry. Now, if you live in a really humid uh, climate, it might take 12 hours or maybe even overnight to dry. If you live in a very arid climate or in the wintertime and you're heating, it might dry in a matter of four or five hours. So this is something that you do have to watch. Um, once it's dry, we can remove it from the uh, lace mat and apply it on the cake. So this is ready to go in the oven and then we would do a second coat. Close this up so it doesn't dry out. Okay. <clears throat> once you've done the two coats and just, just so that you'll know, sometimes on really, really fine lace mats, you may need to do a third coat. Um, or on large silhouette pieces, because there's such a wide area that needs to be filled, you might see some, some of the mix pull back from the edge of the, the mat, and you may need to do a third coat. So just be aware of that. Once the pieces are dried, it's time to take them out. They're very easy to, uh, to take out. You just start with a corner and it should just lift. Let me get this right on the camera. Should lift right out. I always try to keep my hand toward the edge that's being pulled away. Don't pull from here. Uh, you want to pull the pressure right from close to the mat. Take your time so that you don't break off pieces. The lace is pretty strong. And there is a lace piece all ready to go. We'll do one more here. This is a little thinner piece. Okay. One other thing that I'd like to show you, sometimes, depending on your climate, um, I'm filming this in the wintertime in the northern part of the United States. It's very dry in here because of our heat. So what will happen with almost all lace mixes as it sits in the mat, if it's really dry in your kitchen, is it's going to shrink and it pops out all by itself. And this can be a good thing or a bad thing. The two things that I, two points that I want to make here. Number one is your lace mix will almost always shrink as it dries. So I encourage you to remove it from your mat and let it sit out maybe a day, depending on your, uh, the humidity in your kitchen, and let it do its shrinking. Let it shrink so that when you apply it to the cake, it doesn't shrink after it's on the cake. 
because then you're gonna end up with gaps uh, where you've put the two lace pieces together. So if you find that you don't even have to take it out of the lace mats that it's already pulled, you know, popped out by itself, that's simply because it's dried and it's popped out. This doesn't always happen. It only tends to happen when it's really dry in your kitchen. So I just wanted to show that to you. Here's a larger lace mat that we did. And for a, for a lace mat like this, I like to start one edge Get the whole thing going. And then just pull it out a little bit at a time. You can see that this is a pretty um, delicate design. It has a lot of very, very fine uh, lace uh, strings in it, but it's holding together really well. Okay. Again, I'm trying to put the pressure close to the mat and not pulling from the end. There, and now you have a full piece of lace. And you can cut this, you can do whatever you want it to use it for any project. So that's the basics of making the lace and actually removing it from the mat. So from here we're gonna talk about how do I use it? How do I apply it? How do I color it? Coloring can be done in a couple of ways. You can actually color the mix itself. So I could take some out of my jar, put it in a little bowl, and I can use some gel food coloring and I can pre-color it. Or you can, if you want to make a lot of lace the same color, just color the whole, the whole jar. That's the first way, is to pre-color your lace. Um, I will let you know that if you're making black lace or a deep red lace, that it's going to stain the, the mat. No matter which mat you use, it's gonna have a black or a red cast to it after you've used that. And the best way to clean that is to put them in a sink with like a 10% bleach solution and water and let them soak and that will clean the mat. So that's one thing you do have to be careful about of coloring is that it can actually dye your lace mat a little bit. The second way of coloring them is to airbrush them. So I could just take this piece of lace, put it on a paper towel and I can airbrush it. Once you've done that, don't touch it. Because you've wet that product, you just wanna let it sit and dry and then when it's dry then you can pick it up and handle it and the third way which I'm going to show you today is we're going to hand paint it using a luster dust and some alcohol some clear alcohol and we're just going to paint it and that's the way I'm going to show you because everybody has that accessible to them not everyone has an airbrush uh, so we're going to go ahead and color a piece of lace and then I'll teach you how to apply it so we're ready to color a, a piece of lace and I've chosen a, uh, a silver luster dust, and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of uh, edible alcohol. So you can use like Everclear, which you can buy in a liquor store. It's used to flambe products, or you can use lemon juice, or you can use gin or vodka. So any clear li uh, liquor or uh, a lemon extract. Uh, not lemon juice, lemon extract. <laughs> I'm going to put that in the bowl. So I always put it on a paper towel so that it will uh, act as a blotter. Um, and again, because you're wetting this, you're going to want to let this dry when you're done um, and, not, and not really touch this until it's dry. This is a dark, a dark silver. Now, if you want to use a metallic highlighter, you can, and you're going to get a really nice metallic silver look. But I would caution you that highlighters are non-edible and that you should instruct uh, whoever is serving your cake to remove the lace pieces before they serve it. 
uh, highlighters are often used on decorations that are removed from the cake. So it's not a problem to use it. Just make sure that, that you do remove it. You can see this is really pretty easy. Um, while I'm doing this, I just want to talk a little bit about attaching these to your cake. Um, the easiest thing to do is either use an edible glue or a little bit of uh, piping gel. I prefer to use edible glue because I can just put little spots on it. Uh, the homemade Tylos glue, and we have that recipe on our website, works really, really well. The other glue that we found works really well, uh, Fondex has a new glue out and it's more of a gel. Uh, and, and I like it very much, and it, and it attaches lace pieces really well to cakes as well, to fondant. If you want to attach a piece to a buttercream cake, you have to put the lace on the buttercream while the buttercream is very fresh and sticky. So if you're using a crusting buttercream that dries to the touch on the outside, you have to apply your lace piece very quickly before that buttercream starts drying. If you're using like an Italian buttercream or a Swiss meringue buttercream, you can put it right on immediately and it will stick. And the lace will hold up quite well on buttercream. So this is now all done. All I would do from here, I would put this aside and I would let it dry for a five or 10 minutes until I can touch it and, and the silver doesn't stick to my fingers. You can also put a little fan on it if you're in a hurry and you wanna get that done. One caution, when you try to apply a painted piece of lace to your cake, you basically have one chance to do it correctly. Because if you put the lace on and decide, oh, I don't like it there, I'm gonna move it here, it may leave silver marks all over your fondant. So I suggest that you decide where your lace is gonna be and you measure, you cut, you do all your preparation before you actually color it. So use the white piece, put it on the cake, decide exactly how it's going to fit and where it's going to sit, and then color it. And then once it's dried, put it on. And that way you don't make mistakes and you don't stain the cake while you're trying to figure out where it goes. So that's one good piece of advice that I would, that I would hang on to. So this is all done. We sell pre-made lace pieces. And I'm gonna use one of these pre-made lace pieces to show you how to attach to a cake. <clears throat> uh, this is a product we make right here. And we just roll this in a piece of acetate and the pieces are ready to go. Now, this is one that we have added small and large pieces to. They're flexible, you can paint them, you can airbrush them, you can paint them just like, uh, like I did. You can pearlize them. You can use a dry uh, super pearl and a dry dust and, and brush that on. Or you can mix the pearl uh, dust with alcohol and, it, and apply that as well. So there's a lot you can do with it. One of the other things you can do, <clears throat> if you look at this cake right here, I'm just going to move these. <clears throat> if you look at this cake, the lace mat that you see on the second tier is the same lace mat that's on the bottom tier. And all I did was I decided what pattern I wanted to use, and I can see exactly what I did, and I cut a piece from that one, and that's the lace piece that is right on that tier. So be creative. You can cut this lace any way you want. You can cut certain sections out so that your whole cake actually blends well together because you're using different parts of the same lace mat. So that's just another option. While I'm showing you how to do this, I just want to talk a little bit about keeping and storing lace pieces. If you want to make lace ahead of time for a cake, um, once it's dried, you can buy regular acetate collars like this. We sell them on our website. <clears throat> we have different widths. Just lay it, that on there and roll it up put it in a Ziploc bag and seal it. And I would then put that inside another bag and seal it again, just so that you can prevent uh, the humidity from getting in or escaping. All right, this is ready to go. Attach that to a cake. 
I'm going to use the Fondex glue. And let's see, I, the back of the cake I purposely left open. Now, this is a technique that, um, that we like to use here is actually we used a piece of ribbon, of regular satin ribbon, um, and we're going to put the lace over it so that the color shows through in the back. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put little spots of glue. You don't, you don't need a lot. The Fondex is nice because it's a, more of a gel. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't drip. Remember also when you're using any glue on a cake that if you apply the lace to the cake and you move it, Wherever there was a, a spot of glue, if, it, if that now is not behind a piece of lace, you're going to have a shiny spot on the cake. Always make sure you do the edges really well so that when you, when you uh, butt two pieces up together, uh, that they stick. It's sort of like wallpaper. Okay, that is ready to go. That's how easy it is. And that will dry and it will stay right on the cake. Um, again, I just want to caution you, allow your pieces of lace to shrink. They're, they're all going to shrink a little bit depending on the climate, the humidity in your kitchen. So allow them to shrink a little bit. Uh, g give them a day uh, to, to dehydrate a little bit so that when you put them on the cake, they're as small as they're going to get. Otherwise, as the cake uh, lace dries, you'll start seeing a gap between the pieces. So that's just a, a little caution on that. Okay. The last thing I want to show you is what happens or what can you do if your lace piece has dried out too much and you feel like it's, it's breaking on you and you can't use it. So for a little troubleshooting on laces, uh, lace pieces, I wanted to show you what can happen if you pre-make your lace and you've had a long time, uh, they will keep for a long time, or you live in a very dry climate and the lace has dried out on you. And here are some, um, some petals that I made uh, for a flower. And these, well, you can see, these are just crispy. Um, so your first thought would be, oh, I've ruined it. I'm just going to throw these out. You don't really need to. All you need to do is put the lace pieces in a Ziploc bag and then put a wet, uh, just a, a slightly damp paper towel in the bag with it, but make sure it's not touching the lace because it will sort of dissolve it. So just put those in there. This one has been in for maybe two hours, and I just want to show you these same lace pieces are still curled, but they're not crispy anymore. They're not, they're not breaking on me. So this is already better. And that's been about two hours. These lace pieces I put in last night. And take a look at that. Look at the difference. And I started with a product like this. So it is very salvageable. So whatever the relative humidity is in, in your room, the sugar lace will be the same. So if you have a really dry room, your sugar lace will dry out. If you have a really humid climate and it's really sopping wet in your kitchen, um, your lace will be a lot more relaxed. So you can rehydrate it this way. Now, one of the other things that, that you need to be aware of is there is moisture in fondant and there's a lot more moisture in buttercream. So if you have a rather stiff piece of lace and you put it on that cake, it will start absorbing some of that moisture and it will soften. So if you wanted to create, let's say you wanted to create ruffles and you wanted to attach that to the cake. If you lived in a really high humidity area, you might find this just flatten out after a while because it's absorbed a lot of the humidity from the cake itself. So if you ever want to do anything sort of three dimensional with lace, 
always try it out in your area first. Um, the, the Lace is a, is a great product. It offers you a tremendous amount of variation in cake decorating, but it is very susceptible to humidity and you need to learn how to use it in the area where you live. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, all the products are available at globalsugarart.com and thanks for watching.